Hello, my name is Brian Parman. I'm the Ag Finance Specialist in the Department of Ag Business and Applied Economics. I work in uh, for Extension. And today, as you can see from the title slide, I'm going to be talking about backgrounding budgets and profits. Um, this particular talk, we're going to be looking at steers and heifers, um, running, looking at several scenarios in terms of average daily rates of gain, um, as, as, uh, so different feed rations, as well as fattening or growing them up to different weights uh, for both heifers and steers. Uh, using current feed costs and prices as well as current market prices. And so as I go through this, uh, obviously keep in mind that um, what we're trying to do here is, is see uh, both A, if there's uh, some money to be made um, fattening or, or backgrounding calves, uh, as well as what is the sort of the optimal scenario and that's kind of what I'm what I'm hoping to hit on uh, and again this is uh, a lot of these are projections so when I go through the prices here we're taking today's prices and just kind of projecting uh, with no real um, expectation of, of price movement too much one way or another all right so compared to last year and I gave this a similar talk uh, last year on backgrounding budgets and did some different scenarios, but the the feeds the feed price situation is a bit different this year. Um, for one thing, uh, fall crop prices are much higher this year than they were uh, last fall. Uh, we had a situation here in North Dakota last fall where we had a lot of low quality wheat um, that. Our, our farmers weren't really sure what to do with and you might have been able to purchase some of that and feed it uh, at, a, at a relatively low cost. Hay prices are, are uh, uh, slightly elevated for, for like grass hay, a little bit lower for alfalfa hay and I'll show you that in a minute. Trucking and shipping costs and yardage costs uh, in these scenarios uh, remain mostly the same as last year. Not a lot of movement in those, those costs. And then cattle prices for feeder cattle are a bit higher than last year, but not dramatically. Uh, we're kind of, you know, if you'd have looked at prices last spring, you know, we might have been thinking that feeder calves were going to be fairly cheap, but prices rebounded uh, quite a bit. And so this fall, we're kind of we're in a similar situation to where we were last fall uh, around this time in terms of the price of feeder calves. So when you're thinking about backgrounding, obviously whether you keep your own or you're going in and purchasing them, we charge ourselves the market price for whatever 500 or 600 weight calf that we're, we're retaining because obviously you could have, if, if they were your own, you could have taken them down the road and sold them and, and, and received whatever, whatever the market price was. So you got to obviously charge yourself that. So this is the corn pr uh, price of corn I was talking about, and I just wanted to show a chart of corn prices uh, and this is on a continuous contract basis over the last three years and this fall uh, you know if you, if you see here on the right um, is not not a not the peak the peak was uh, there in 2019 uh, especially the early part of 2019 where we had that uh, $4.50 $4.80 cent corn for a for a period of time we're not nearly that high Obviously, the beginning of 2020, when the pandemic hit for uh, COVID, uh, corn prices went down to nearly three dollars. But here this fall, we're seeing in over four bucks. So, and then if you compare it to last fall, it was more like 380. So corn prices are elevated uh, relative to last year. That's that's for sure. So this is this here is the uh, 2020 alfalfa prices from USDA. Uh, this they just they collect average prices for uh, and then they rate it premium, good, fair. Uh, what we would tip, what you'd probably typically feed beef cattle is going to be in that good or fair range. Um, so our near our nearest neighbors, South Dakota for good hay, 128 to 180 bucks a ton, and then for fair a lower protein content maybe closer to. 16% uh, or 14% or protein, 103 to $113 per ton um, for alfalfa. And then we also have Montana here, uh, similar, uh, maybe 
about the same as, as what you're going to see in South Dakota. So I'd use those as a proxy for, for hay prices across North Dakota is these, uh, these Montana and South Dakota prices, which are tracked here. And, and again, I'm going to show you on the next slide, but how alfalfa price is down perhaps a little bit uh, over last year. And here it is, 2019 versus 2020 alfalfa pr hay prices. Here's November 12th, 2019. We had uh, Montana at you know 110 to 180 dollars, and then 80 to 150 on this end. So again, it's a range, but they're not dramatically different. And then if we look uh, here, uh, and then also South Dakota, 175 to 225. Uh, and then this year, 128 to 180. So alfalfa is is lower, especially the South Dakota market than 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 what was seen last year. So if you're thinking about feeding, obviously uh, feed costs are a big deal. They're extremely important. So we have a higher price of corn this year, and a lower price in alfalfa. And then grass hay. Grass hay prices are similar to last year's prices, but again, they're slightly elevated. Um, for whatever reason, alfalfa is a bit cheaper than last year. Grass type hay is a bit more expensive than last year, but not dramatically. So pretty much your, your hay costs, I would expect them to be roughly, if you did any backgrounding last year, roughly what they were uh, the year before. Uh, corn, on the other hand, not so much with, with corn prices being as elevated as they are. So here's my cost price assumptions as I'm uh, as I go through this is I've got grass hay at 75 bucks a ton we're going to be using you know the high end of fair to, to good uh, alfalfa hay prices here's corn silage corn grain at 380 a bushel um, that would be if you know if you're growing it and you're looking at cash prices yes I know spot was closer to 420 but cash uh, you're not going to get that uh, not up here so 380 DDGs. Uh, 160 a ton limestone bag salt and then some premix yardage we're charging 35 cents a day that's what they charge at carrington um, we have this budget online that i'm going to be going through and you can change the yardage if you want to and and you you may see other budgets that have much higher or much lower yardage fees it really depends on how they break out the cost i've seen some instances where feed costs are included in the yardage so you'll see this really high yardage cost of maybe a dollar fifty a day or something like that well if you throw the lump the feed in there then that that makes sense truck trucking at about 75 cents a hundred weight and then you got your vet costs and i'm just going to use a shrink and death loss of three percent and one percent respectively uh, as we go through here so six different scenarios uh three steer scenarios and three heifer uh, I'm going to do the, the, the first steer one is a 1.8 pounds 80, uh, average daily gain and we're feeding from a 500 weight and to an 800 weight and then 2.8 pounds on a steer from 525 weight to 805 and then this one we're basically finishing going all the way from a calf to 1270 pounds at a really high rate of gain of 3.6 pounds and then heifers uh, we're running two scenarios at 1.8 pound uh, ADG and that's from 450 to 750 and then 550 to 850. Okay, so that's 1.8 pound and then a higher rate of gain, uh, 2.8 pounds from 525 to 805 on the heifers. So I'm gonna go through these uh, six scenarios and we're gonna look at the profitability uh, uh, under each case. So we'll start with steers. We'll just run through the, the steer feeding scenarios first and then, and then again, we'll go through the, uh, the heifer scenarios. All right, so the prices that I'm using are from the uh, uh, USDA auction summary for North Dakota. So here's the average across the state uh, summary ending November 13th. So when you're thinking about, okay, so what am I going to put in for my cost of a 500 weight steer? I'm going to put them at $167 a piece. That was the average. So if I'm going to background the steer, my upfront cost is going to be $167 per hundred weight. And then when I go to put in the uh, actual prices or the, the revenue expectation, let's say we're going to uh, 850 pounds roughly, I'm gonna use this $139 uh, dollar range. Now, if I'm going to 800 weight, now eh, maybe one, I'm gonna use this 128. So if I'm going to 800 pounds, I'd use this 128 at uh, 850, 800 plus, or 850 plus, this 139. And then for the finished one, 
the, the, the last scenario where they get really, where, where we feed them up to 1,270 pounds, I'm gonna use this $127 per hundred weight right here. I, I had to cut this off and, and, and attach it because the, the there isn't a ton of these sales. So I'm not sure how strong this $127 is, but uh, we, you know, we could look around if we really wanted to get more detailed. But again, we're, we're projecting because that animal is going to be on feed for a while. So you could go through with your own budget there and play with that number, that 127, and move it down, say, seven bucks or up 10 bucks, and, and it would really uh, make a difference in your bottom line. But for this presentation, since we're already doing multiple scenarios, I didn't uh, run that. So that would be an interesting thing to do is once you decide, maybe after. You watch this and you do some thinking on your own operation you decide okay i'm gonna uh, background 525 up to 850 pound steers uh, i would go in there and play with the uh, expected sale price uh, per hundred weight there at the end and move that around once you decide on which scenario suits you best and, and see exactly how, how much prices can move one way or another and you still make a profit or or how much the, the loss would actually be so here's the 525 to 850 pound scenario uh, at 1.8 pound average daily gain. You can see it here. And this is the ration um, that was put forth. And, and I have to thank Carl Hoppe for putting these uh, ration scenarios together for me based on what I, what I needed him to do. And so he had it. Uh, we've got um, 10 pounds per head per day in grass hay, 17 in silage, 2.5 pounds of DDGs and then a little bit of salt. And then this comes out to about 88 cents a day for this, for this scenario, okay? So then when I put it into the budget spreadsheet, and there's a lot of stuff, when you look at this budget, there's a lot of stuff below this return to labor risk, uh, management and risk. I cut all that off because what it adds up to are these, these prices in here anyway. So I just, this way it fit on the slide better and you can see it, but I used that projected selling price of $139. My beginning value was 167, as you'll recall. And then we got the shrink, shrink and death loss down here. So weaned at 525 and we're feeding them up to 850 pounds. That animal's gonna be on feed for 180 days to achieve that at a 1.8 pound average daily gain. And we basically get a profit of $13.28. So that's, that's pretty, pretty slim margin there on backgrounding under this scenario here, this 1.8 pound average daily gain. All right. So our next scenario is this 500 pound to 800 pound uh, steer. And we're gonna feed them to uh, achieve a 2.8 pounds average daily gain. And we see here that they're gonna, uh, again, I have this uh, grass, legume, hay, silage, corn, corn grain, DDGs, and then some salt for about 35 uh, pounds total of feed, 35.071 if you include the salt. And obviously it's gonna be more expensive to feed this animal per day uh, at, at, at a dollar and six cents estimated cost to achieve this 2.8 pounds. And we're going from 500 to 800 weight. And then what you have here, okay, is so we're, we're starting at this 500 weaning weight. Uh, the cost is still about $167. That's roughly what it was for those 500 to 550s. Pro same projected selling price because uh, we're talking about that 800 plus range. Feed cost of $1.06. Here's my yardage. I always have it highlighted, but that's where it is at that 35 cents. So in this case, we're making $72 per head um, by, by getting that uh, 2.8 pounds on there. And while we're selling at similar weights and we're purchasing at the similar price, uh, putting on all that weight faster, essentially we get a, a lower yardage cost. Um, not, not in uh, uh, cents per day, but in total cost. Because you see this animal's only on feed for, for uh, 108 days versus that other one that was on feed for 180 days, right? So then that, that yardage fee just keeps adding up. I mean. 80% longer that you're feeding that animal and the labor and everything that goes into it. So what this is showing is that relative to like yardage costs and other things, uh, feed costs, even though corn is higher, are not all that high. They're not prohibitively high. So putting on the weight here is fa uh, faster 
uh, actually pays quite a bit more and you're looking at $72 a head. And again, some, some of the stuff I'm putting in here for costs is conservative. You might be able to do better um, uh, pay, uh, given what you're going to have to uh, pay this year. Uh, we, we try to be realistic, but a little conservative with some of this. So again, $72.03. Okay, so this is the, the finisher uh, scenario where we're going for a predicted aid, uh, average daily gain of 3.6 pounds. Um, this animal, we're going from a 575 weight to 1270. And that animal is going to average 34.4 pounds per day. And the dollar per head per day obviously is quite a bit higher at $1.53 a day. So this, this critter is going to be on feed for quite a while to get there. And it's going to be a fairly um, strong ration to be able to achieve 3.6 pounds per day. And here it is uh, broken out on, on the spreadsheet. And so this projected selling price changes to $127 per hundred weight. So less than the others because he's heavier. Uh, the beginning value is a little bit lower uh, at f because it's in the 575. You're getting close to the 600 weight category. So that's $127 right now. Uh, this animal is going to be on feed for 193 days to achieve 1270. Uh, to go from 575 to uh, 1270, 193 days. But the profit on this is almost $250 a head. Uh, so it, it, the animal is on feed for a long time, this steer is, but you're putting on a lot of weight. And so this is, this is again showing that being able to put the weight on right now is definitely profitable and you're talking about $250 a head uh, profit uh, by, by feeding this animal all the way out to 1,270 pounds. At a, at a very hot ration. Now, I don't I don't have this scenario run, but I can guarantee you if you drop this 3.6 uh, to a lower value, 2.8 or 1.8 or something like that, and then he has to stay on feed a whole lot longer, this profit will go down quite a bit. So right now it's showing definitely that it pays to to uh, put the weight on as, as quickly as possible. So then the next three scenarios we're going to go through, and, and again, uh, I'm going to, at the end, I'm, I have a table that I'm going to show that compares all six scenarios so we can look at them side by side as I go through this. But in this, uh, the next three are going to be uh, heifer backgrounding scenarios that uh, Carl Hoppy also put the, put the feed ration together for me. Uh, and, and I'm going to go through the same uh, budgetary, budgetary discussion with this. So. Media, uh, I use that same um, USDA auction prices uh, for the week ending November 13th in North Dakota. This is what I have. Uh, nothing really over 766 weights, so I have to uh, finish it out there. I'll use that price. And then for the, um, the values or the costs of, of retaining the animal or going and buying them, uh, that obviously comes in here. Quite a bit cheaper than steers right now. Uh, the price slide for heifers was pretty, pretty severe this fall with you know, $30, $40 difference between heifers and steers per hundred weight right now. So our first scenario were heifers from 450 to 750 pounds at 1.8 pounds per day. Uh, 28 pounds of feed comes out to about 83 cents uh, per head per day in feed cost. So going, putting on 300 pounds, 1.8 pound per day at about 83 cents in feed cost. And so here's that heifer scenario. And what we wind up with, or we're beginning value at 126. I'm using the same shrink and the same death loss. Uh, finished out at 750 uh, and then headed down the road. Sale price at $113 per hundredweight. And we wind up with a profit of about 28 bucks per head in this case. So profitable, definitely uh, uh, always, always better when this is above zero than below it but not terribly lucrative in this case, where you're talking about barely $30 per head. But again, it's kind of a theme that, we're, that, that I'm showing in this, in this scenario that uh, it, it, it's lower, but it's similar to the steers. This, these lower average daily gain rates tend not to be as profitable as the higher ones, as you'll see uh, moving forward. But the putting on, and then, you know, this animal's on feed for 165 days. And again, that's where that yardage of 35 cents uh, really starts to add up. Um, 
So then our next scenario is 525 pounds to 800 pounds. So in this case, we're putting on 275 pounds at that same 1.8 pounds average daily gain. The animal's a little bigger when we get it, so our, our costs per day are higher right out of the gate uh, at 90 cents per day. And then the ration of 32 and a half pounds of feed a day with, uh, with this breakout. So here it is with uh, uh, the, the, the numbers that were plugged in there, and this is actually showing a loss. And the big reason for that is that we're, only, uh, we're making money putting on the weight, and putting on 275 pounds for this long just isn't enough to pay out, and that's what this is showing here. And I, I, I think I have this scenario uh, toward the end of the presentation that I'm going to show uh, where, we, where we make some adjustments real quick to it. But Beginning value is about the same, similar. Uh, projected sale price is about the same. Feed cost, a little bit higher. Uh, lot cost, the same. And 155 days on feed, uh, that gets us a loss of two bucks. So we, we really aren't putting on enough weight in this scenario fast enough to actually pay off is, is what this is showing. And then our final heifer scenario is 550 to 850 pounds back to uh, uh, 300 pounds that we're putting on the animal at, at uh, 2.8 pounds uh, per day. So quite uh, higher than the 1.8 before. Uh, this is more expensive again per day at $1.08, which, which should be obvious because we're putting on more weight. And here's the pounds of feed per day and the breakout there. A lot of silage uh, for this in this particular scenario, again, put together by uh, Carl Hoppe for for this uh, for this talk, but this is our uh, final heifer scenario there. And then here is the breakout of the heifer scenario here, and what we got 550 pounds to 850. This animal's only in the in the yard there for 107 days, a lot a lot shorter period of time than the other two. Uh, projected selling price roughly the same. Beginning value they didn't change much between 450 weights and 550 weights really, and 126. Feed costs at $1.08 per day. And we get down here and the profit is about $62 per head. Okay, so quite a bit higher profit and getting to that 850 pounds. And the explanation is again, this yardage fee, uh, total cost on yardage is, is much lower because we're only at 107 days instead of 150 or 160. And, and that's achieved by this higher average daily rate of gain. So if you're seeing a theme here, um, feed costs relative to the value of the uh, pounds that are being put on is still relatively low and enabling us to to make a profit i'm not even messing with uh, prices of fed cattle or anything like that this is just straight up showing that that putting on the weight uh, that right now despite higher corn prices it's it, it pays to put weight on these animals so as I said, there's a, I was going to put together a, a profit loss breakdown that kind of compared them all side by side. And so here's our three steer examples, 1.8, 2.8, 3.6 uh, average daily gains, uh, the, the varying days on feed. And then you kind of look here to this column, the profit and loss. And uh, the more weight we put on or the faster we put it on, the more valuable uh, and the more profit we make. So you see like this, this uh, fed out steer here from 575 to 1270, you, we're profiting $1.29 per day per head uh, doing that. On the 500 to 800 weight at 2.8 pounds per day, we're making 67 cents uh, per head per day profit uh, putting the weight on. So that, that's pretty solid. And then this 1.8 pounds is, is like, that's almost a break even proposition. Uh, it, it's just the, the animals in the yard too long. The yardage fees are starting to add up too fast and we're just not putting on enough weight. Um, so then we come down here to the heifer scenarios and you see a similar theme with the exception of, uh, you know, the, the first scenario is a barely a kind of a break even proposition. The second scenario for all intents and purposes, I know it shows a negative two bucks, but that's when you're doing estimates, it's pretty close to zero. So these two scenarios really don't uh, help us out a lot. It's not until we start putting on two, three pounds a day or more that we start really seeing a profit. And that's this 550 to 850 weight example, putting on almost three pounds per day, we're, we're netting 58 cents to go up to 850 pounds. Okay, so 
I think you guys are probably by now getting the theme of all of this, which is that putting on weight as fast as you can pays. Now, obviously, you, do, you can't. You, there's only so much you can do, but right now, that that's that's the theme through all of the scenarios that I ran, whether it's steers or heifers, there it, that it pays to put on weight, uh, not not go cheap or anything like that. It, you know, put the weight on, pack on the pounds, and get them out the door as quickly as possible. That's what this is showing here, so that we keep those yardage and overhead costs that you got to deal with labor and whatever else lower. And as I said, I had some scenarios so uh, to kind of re-emphasize that point. You know, if we say all else equal, what happens if I keep the 500 weight steer with 2.8 average daily gain to 850 pounds? Uh, before that, we, we, we had them down to 800. And look what it does. It actually increases our profit pretty considerably to $108. And, and instead of what we showed before, which I think was what, 67 or something like that, 70. So putting, adding, adding another 50 pounds onto the animal uh, makes sense. And the reason is because this 2.8 pounds average daily gain, we're making money every, uh, quite a bit of money every day that that animal is in the yard uh, at, at 2.8 pound average daily gain. It's sort of a balancing act. You're trying to figure out, okay, how much is it costing me to have this critter here in veterinary and labor and my own time and everything else? And versus what about uh, putting in the feed and, uh, and feed costs and being able to, to achieve these higher average daily gains. And what this shows is that 2.8 pounds, you're making money keeping them in the lot and putting weight on. And, and the other example that made quite a bit more with putting on 3.6 really pays because you're more than covering overhead and variable costs. And every day that they're sitting there in the yard getting bigger, you're, you're making money. All right, so let's do the same thing with the heifer. Uh, if we have all else equal, what happens if I keep the 525 weight heifer with a 1.8 pound average daily gain to 850? And I, I believe it went from a negative $2 to 15.82. So what this kind of shows is 1.8 pounds is uh, fairly close to a break-even proposition on heifers. We need to get a we need to have a higher average daily gain than that in order to really make a profit. Yes, 1.8 pounds ADG is, is, is above break even, but just barely. I mean, and we're not, we're, that's, the margin is too slim in my opinion uh, to, to go with that. So I would definitely be looking at trying to get to that three pounds per day or better on all my steers and heifers if I'm looking to background them and, and put some weight on. And right now, all the, all the cost data and everything else and the market data is showing that, that uh, uh, buyers uh, are willing to, to pay for weight. That, that's, that's what they're willing to do and feed costs are low enough that we can put it on and, and make a profit as things stand right now. So some key points to this presentation. Uh, I'll reiterate it again, it pays to put on weight. So the purchase costs for 500 to 575 weight steers are high. Uh, but feed costs remain lower or low, relatively low, compared to what our market prices are for eight, 800 uh, weight animals all the way up to 12, 1,200. So what that says is, you know, it, it, that there's money to be made doing this. And then, as I, as I said it in the last few slides, putting on weight faster is better because it reduces your yardage costs as well as the number of days the animal has to be managed for every pound gained. Okay. So that's, that's kind of the theme here is put on as much weight as reasonably possible, as fast as possible, uh, and, and you stand to make uh, as much, uh, the most amount of money from, from any kind of uh, feeding enterprise. So the other key points is you need to put on at least 300 pounds on heifers. Uh, otherwise, there just isn't uh, enough en enough there to really make it worth it. So you're going to want to, if they're 500 pounds, feed them up to 8, 850, um, 450 pounds up to 750, 800. And again, you're going to want to do it as fast as possible. At least that 2.8 pound, uh, let's call it three pounds average daily gain uh, should definitely be your target. So we're talking about 300 pounds per animal on the heifer side at three pounds per day. That's that That should be our target. And if we can achieve that, all, all else holds equal, we're, we're, we stand to make a decent profit on, on everything we retain and, and put weight on. So 
that's kind of that's good news and, and it's a similar story to what we were seeing last year that the last couple of years it, they have paid for for producers to to put weight on these animals and and we're seeing that now as well so with that i'd like to uh, thank everyone uh, who watched uh, i have my email address here um, i didn't put my phone number because i've been in and out of the office quite quite often with the uh, stuff going on with COVID and everything else a lot of working from home hence the reason we're doing this virtual versus last year where we did it in person but thanks to everyone who watched if there's any questions you can shoot me an email uh, shown here and I'll try to get to it as a, in a timely manner um, otherwise I, I appreciate it and hopefully uh, next year or here in the somewhat near future I can start doing some of this stuff face to face so thank you everyone and uh, have a good week Thank you.